It's not something that just that dogs just have. Lots of people will assume that their dogs will protect them. Not really the case. No. You'll realise very quickly that we're made out of the things that they're supposed to eat. A couple of them barked a little yeah. bit, but none of them went in for it. Hi, I'm Dr. Sab Cohen Hatton. I'm a neuroscientist specialising in animal and human learning mechanisms. My name's Jamie Penrith and I specialise in canine predatory behaviour and I'm also a former police dog handler. And I'm Danny Wells, I'm a dog trainer that specialises in unwanted behaviour. Every week we sit down to talk about the latest research in canine psychology. And more importantly, how you can apply it to your own dog and help get to know them a bit better. Welcome to The Dog Scholar. I've got a question. Go on then. Uh, always got a question. I know. <laughs> Do we look surprised? You're the PhD. It should be. I've got the answers. <laughs> We've got a simple question. Yeah. Will my dog protect me? Absolutely <laughs> effing not. <laughs> You'll all be. <laughs> Surprised to hear. <laughs> we hear it a lot though, don't we? People say, you know, much. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna get a dog because it's gonna protect me. And do you know what? It might actually be the oldest job that dogs had alongside humans and the very reason we domesticated them in the first place. You know, that kind of idea of the guard dog. And we've all seen those beware of the dog signs on people's houses. I think it's a liability in today's society, don't you? Absolutely. I think the last but it depends thing... if you put a sign up or not. Well, even if I come onto your property and your dog decides it's gonna come and nail me. Yeah, then yeah, then yeah. It's on you. It, yeah, yeah. You. It, the the only exception is you, if you can if you can prove that there's an immediate risk to life or safety, isn't it? Mm. You know, if someone's coming into your garden and your dog nails them, let's just say you're in the shit. You know? <laughs> However, if they climb through your bedroom window at night, equipped with a machete and a balaclava, and your dog does them in. Feel free to go run a bath while your dog's on them. Mm. You know what but I mean? But you know what? That's a really interesting point because how would the dog differentiate between those two circumstances? What about people that haven't trained their dog? Well, their dogs what, ain't doing that. Just not... generally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go, episode over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think it's a, it's a real sort of like reflection of society. Do you know what I mean? Because you said, I, I'm people that I've worked with before where, you know, a dog may have snapped at somebody who acted uh, aggressively, protectively to, of them, if you like, towards people. And I said, you know, if that was the 1960s, 1970s, you to give the dog a bone for that. Yeah. Nowadays, yeah, yeah, nowadays, yeah. the whole way that society and law and everything looks at yeah. dogs and the behaviour of dogs, I think we've pushed ourselves forward to a stage beyond dogs' ability to keep up with us. You know what I mean? And so now, natural behaviours and things that we would have yeah. previously, you know, sought and, and wished to see more of are detrimental. Yeah. You know, in certain situations, it can look like your dog's attempting to protect you, but the vast, vast majority of the time, nine out of 10, your dog's self-preservating, your dog's nervous, it's unsure, it wants to create space. Now, if you're in a situation where, you know, some, so there's an immediate risk to your life and your dog does have a little cheeky bite, that is not protecting you. People who intend to cause you harm or, you know, have, have an agenda where they intend to, you know, profit lucratively, if your dog gives them a nip, they're gonna put that dog under under pressure. And when I say that, I mean they're gonna kick your dog, they're gonna they're gonna assault your dog. Unless your dog has certain genetics, like specific genetic traits that have been purposely bred in, accompanied by really clear, concise professional training, your dog's gonna run for the hills every single time. Now there is except there are exceptions, and I hate having to bring this up because people go, like, my dog's the exception. But Let's say, what are we going to say, Jay? Like one of a thousand, one, something like that. There are dogs out there that are really, really naturally assertive and they will hold the ground. They are out there, but they are rare. How do you know then if your dog will protect you? Well, for this episode, I managed to find a study that was looking at whether their personality could be a good predictor and what aspects of their personality would be a good predictor of whether or not they would do something like protecting you. And this particular study was looking at how dogs would perform in working dog trials. So that includes things like protection work where dogs are trained to go and bite somebody, as well as a lot of other things like obedience tests and tracking a scent. So it was more generic than just protection work, but it was certainly an aspect within it. 
At aged 12 to 18 months, dogs were given a personality test. It was the same one that's used by the Swedish Working Dog Association. So it's one that's regularly yeah. used to assess how, how effective dogs are going to be. And it looked at particular personality traits like playfulness, um, chase proneness, how likely the dog is to chase something that's yeah. moving quickly in front of it, um, curiosity and fearfulness, sociability and aggressiveness, as well as the last one, shyness versus boldness. Mm. And basically the dogs were exposed to several different new situations and their reactions were measured and then they were scored to indicate various aspects of their personality. So they were looking at things like how they'd respond to strangers, um, how keen they were to play tug of war with a handler and how likely they were to chase something that had like a prey-like object that was whizzing around in front of them on a, on a line. And also how they'd respond to scary things. So things like gunshots, and, and I love this, they had ghosts. I'm not kidding, they yeah. had ghosts. So they tested the dog's reaction to people covered in white sheets, which were ghosts. That actually, that happens yeah. in domestic working trials now. Does they, it? They yeah, they test the dog's nerve. How's your dog gonna react with, with something that they've not seen before? And you're looking for inquisitiveness. If they stand up and be really assertive, then great, but a bit of, what? what is this curiosity? Like a suspicion test. Y yeah, yeah, you don't want a dog that's <laughs> back, back and away, do you know what I mean? But do you think they know that they're ghosts? Does that make no, them creepier? No, they don't know they're ghosts. <laughs> Well, they'll know if they get the willies put up to them, I'll tell you that. <laughs> One dog knows whether they're ghosts or not. Look, <laughs> 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 let's get out of here, Scoop! <laughs> <laughs> Please hope that makes the final cut. <laughs> That's amazing. We would have got away with it if it wasn't for you pesky kids. Yeah. The guys in the editing room would have yeah. themselves. That's brilliant. It was Mr. Francis, the fairground operator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, it's just when you said ghost. Yeah. Bring it to you like Scrappy. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. Got our very own Scrappy Doo with yeah, Jimmy yeah. Chew. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, so, that's so, that's so, brilliant. No. <laughs> back in the room. Back Brilliant. So this study itself found a relationship between the dog's personality and how well they'd go on to perform in these working dog trials. They weren't solving any mysteries, though, I'm sad to say. Yes. That's level two. <laughs> <laughs> So dogs that scored highly on the scale more to towards boldness rather than shyness were more sociable to tr strangers, they were more playful, and they were more ready to chase. And they were also much more fearless than the other dogs, and they'd readily explore new situations without being worried about it. They, 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 sh they showed no trepidation. So these bolder dogs were then more likely to reach higher levels of performance than the shy dogs. Yep. But bold dogs weren't any better than bold bitches. You were just more likely to get a bold dog. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. So, and again, you know, that makes sense because active and bold dogs are more likely to learn those complex behaviors, aren't they? And they're more likely to perform well and they've got to be persistent. And a, a, and a fearless dog is going to be less distracted and less inhibited in a new situation because they're not going to be so worried about it, right? But do you know what else was super important in this? Mm -hmm. The experience of the trainer. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah course. An experienced trainer is more likely to recognize the traits of the dog and understand how to get the best out of their learning. And that's really interesting because you see lots of studies that involve something to do with teaching a dog something or dog training, and they don't look yeah. at the experience or the consistency of the trainer. Lots of studies that I see rely on questionnaires from pet owners themselves rather than someone that's. Which that, that's and it's, 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 worth, it's worth mentioning here when we say trainer, this isn't the same as. Um, anything else when we refer to trainers, a big aspect of bringing a dog on like this is a decoy. Yeah. And a yeah, decoy a isn't point. necessarily a trainer. A decoy is mastering the art of becoming prey. They are there to build confidence in the dog, yeah. build you know, an understanding of how to achieve victory. Yeah, the decoy is the person in the in, bite suit. In the bite suit. At in home. The, yeah. yeah, so they're the ones that essentially yeah. stand in front they're of the They're the artists that mold this. Run and this, jump this and, and jump onto them and bite their yeah. kind of big protective bite yeah. suit. Like and there's a lot more to it. There's yeah. a lot more to it than, than people realise. You know, you can give dogs un unpleasant. Um, experiences by being a poor decoy. We have a term called blocking a dog. Obviously you've heard of this, Jamie. So blocking a dog is when you when you when your dog's running at you, you need to convert forward motion into circular motion to avoid any injuries. Mm -hmm. So as the dog comes in, you absorb the dog, you spin it off 
and you're taking away the impact. So it's not just psychology, it's physics. Yeah, it you really is. You get the full really, science really experience sure, yeah. here you, on the dog You follow. walk the dog through and you cause any sorts of neck injuries, you know, really, really excessively driven dogs will, will just blank out any sorts of pain and keep going again. But, you know, they're usually not great for, like, personal protection yeah. and things because they're too much in drive. Yeah. Um, the, the dogs that are ideal for personal protection, they can be put off by that. And then you've got to also counteract the predatory cycle. A dog will want to go in, you know, stay, chase, kill, um, catch, kill, dissect, and consume. We want a dog to maintain that grip, that push bite. And what happened? we have to build the dog in terms of, if you go still, a natural apex predator will let go and go into the dissection part of the predatory cycle. You can lay as still as you want for our protection dogs. They'll keep pushing and holding yeah. the whole time. And that takes, it's an art. It really is. It's an art that people don't appreciate, isn't it, Jamie? And it's not something that just that dogs just have, no, is it? It's, you know, not. it's not. It's not, it's not. Because I've got a particular breed or because yeah. I think they're a hard looking dog, yeah. that they are a hard looking dog yeah. and they will possess yeah. those. And all them traits the are the very, very start of it. Or them traits don't dictate whether this end result of will your dog keep push grip and will it hold, will it take pressure? They're just a good guide of what I'm going to start working with. Yeah. But many, many dogs you'll see, they'll, they'll go, top trainers who do these top working trials, they'll go through many dogs before they find the one that they'll try. Yeah. And it's, I mean, this is great because lots of people will assume that their dogs will protect them. But what this is showing is that dogs definitely need the right kind of personality 100%. to protect a and person. Training. And they also need the right kind of training for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. A dog that is naturally doing this sort of thing is a liability. If you've got that dog, you know, you might feel great that the dog's doing it, but chances are you've got a dog with behavioral problems and he's, yeah. he's very bold to be in a, in a family home, well, you know what I mean? You know, there, there is this this feeling that people will think, oh, because I've got this type of breed yeah. or whatever. Yeah, that I've got will, an Alsatian. He's yeah, going to they, they've me. got that. They've got those attributes because they're used for certain purposes or whatever. But you'll know yourself. You know, a lot a lot of the time for a a decent working dog, even if you've got the genetics right, even if you bred, you know, where where uh, uh, purpose. Uh, breeding programs exist to actually try and create yeah. or, or reproduce if you right, replicate working qualities just like with any other yeah. uh, us included you know you you know you've got the 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 right parent is just because you've got the right exposure when you're a young age just because you're in the right hands just because you go through the right training mm -hmm. doesn't mean that as you unfold as the adult form that you're necessarily going to have all of the attributes and all of the qualities required so mm -hmm. a lot of people pay a lot of money for what they you know, would hope would turn they out would, to be yeah. or what they're told would be uh, a decent personal protection dog. You'll know that better than yeah, me. Yeah, and unfortunately, a lot, of pay, a lot of people pay a lot more than a lot of money for dogs that are not suitable to do the job. What's and a lot it, more than a lot of money? Well, let's say like y your top level like personal protection dog, you're talking between seven and 10 grand. Some of them are selling them for wow. 60 odd thousand pounds really? and they're not going to do the job. They're just not going to do the job. Any kennels that have got 50 dogs that are ready to go into homes to be personal protection dogs, they're just not that common. It's very, very difficult. Yeah. It's very difficult to get to get a dog that ticks all the boxes, especially for personal protection. And I guess they've got to maintain that training then as well. Yeah, of course they have. And then you've got different levels of dog, like, like you know, my dog, Logan, um, he, he, he's great for working trials. He's, he's hard as a coffin nail. But he's not an easy dog to live with. He's very assertive by nature, dare I say dominant. He's very, very assertive by nature. And it needs you need to know what you're doing with a dog like that. Because yeah. if 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 he sees he can get away with it, his natural instinct will be to raise his levels of aggression to try and achieve a result. And that's what makes him such a hard dog. Whereas Wade, he's soft as anything, but there's a limit to what he'll take. No one in the street breaking into your house or doing anything will be able to find that limit without a bite suit on because a dog, you know, you'll realise very quickly that we're made out of the things that they're supposed to eat. So you know it's a I mean? bit of an oxymoron then, isn't it? The idea that you'll have a dog that's your pet dog, that's your family dog, that's also going to be a really good protection They dog. are out there. I had one, my last dog, Brody. You know, I, I've, I've got experience with that. I run him in trials. He's, I think he's the only person, the, the only person, the only <laughs> dog to um, to win. A lot, of more, a, a lot of more defend and pursue the back to back. The only dog to be a twice. person, yeah. On the bounce, I think he's still the only dog. And he's actually in the 100 Best Malamars in Europe book. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, he was, he was just a, a he was a gem. Him, you know, he had environmental issues because I never got him until he was um, till he was older. What like climate change? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he didn't like slippy floors and things like that. But he was really tough and he was level headed. I could have him wow. around anything. I used to do demonstrations in front of thousands of people, security dog demonstrations. Take him in the crowd and all the kids would get pictures with him and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. He was yeah. a very, very. That is what. That's the unicorn. That's what we're looking for. A real hard dog that will take pressure and can switch off because he perceives the whole scenario as a big game. If, if you've got somebody, so you're, you're somebody at home and you're thinking, you know, or, or you're somebody who thinks, okay, I wouldn't mind having my dog protect my property or whatever. Obviously, 
then we've got the, what we were talking about earlier on is the law. The law. You know, right. and the way that the law isn't set up to support yeah. you in, in, that, in that. The law around it is the same as you can protect yourself. It has to be reasonable force and there has to be just reason for you to, for you to deploy your dog. Unless you're a police officer, you cannot let that dog off a lead. It it's a use be, of force. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a reasonable use of force. If someone's trying to break in your door, you open the door and they've been absolutely savage from head to toe, then you're just not going to justify that. Yeah. Um, if someone's trying to get through your house, they manage to get in. Your dog detains them, and as soon as the situation's resolved, you take the dog. You take the dog off. You phone the police. Well, that's a reasonable use of use of force. Right. Most so, people so, aren't about that life. You so, don't need the protection dog. So, so what else could we consider instead? We can we can consider having an emergency action plan in case things happen. Strategies in place. We can have house alarms. We can have you know rock doors that that, that can't be that can't be kicked any mm. easy. Um, we can you know advanced alarm systems. I mean There's CCTV all sorts. systems CCTV. now. Are all yeah. over the place. Yeah, you can have yeah. as many cameras as you yeah. like around yeah. your property. Yeah. You can you even get them that wire straight into it to the to the police. Absolutely. You know, yeah. it's not like a laptop. You can't you can't program this dog and like he's there for life. It's constant commitment for the duration that you have that dog for. And as soon as you know, if you if you're in a situation unfortunate enough where you have to deploy that dog, then you best believe if you if that goes to court, you're gonna have to demonstrate how yeah, responsible yeah. you are, what continuation training you've done. Is it with someone reputable? Are the you know are they, are they certified in anything? What's their experience? Yeah. It, and everything it, isn't geared up to set to try and help you out. Unfortunately, you know, it's, it's not, not and that's the same you. when you're defending yourself in the street. You know, you you yeah. can, you know you can still come a cropper and end up. In the shit. <laughs> There's a really yeah. serious message to that. Even if your dog isn't trained and it would protect you, you have to think really seriously about the consequences yeah. of that. I have a friend, he contacted me about getting a protection dog. He's a taxi driver, he had a bit of drama, someone not willing to pay, and this person was a bit a bit naughty. You know, he knows some people and made some threats. And due to his beliefs, he weren't allowed dogs in the house. And he asked me about it and I said to him, mate, you can't house that dog in the garden and someone climb over and that dog do a job on them because you're going to end up in jail and you've got four kids and, you know, it's it, you're not going to benefit from that at all. And, and sensibly enough, he let it go straight away. He went, oh, that's an option. I'm going to have to leave then. But so many people in this country who provide these dogs, well, they're going, here's a choice of dogs. Take your pick. That, that No one, everyone's thinking about making a quick buck and these dogs... Then, then, then they're not to be taken lightly. There's, there's a lot of work to it. There's yeah. a lot, a lot of work to it. You know, Jamie will tell you how many police dogs have you had that were a piece of work that you had to really make the effort to bond with. I've had, I, I mean, I've had dogs. One, one springs to mind in particular that I turned up to a, uh, a rugby club where there's a fight was spilling out into a car park at a rugby club. And bearing in mind, this is a dog that lived with me. Okay, lived with my family. It had done for a, a long period of time. Trained, yeah. licensed, etc. You know, well trained in yeah. protection work and what was required of it. Opened up the boot of the of the van, you know, to get the dog out. Dog looked at me, <sighs> at me, yeah, mm. at me. Yeah. Shut the boot, <laughs> rolled my sleeves up, and went over and started to yeah, yeah. sort out the thing, you know. And that's a dog that there's no guarantees, there's even not. with a dog where there's it's well trained, because you're it's an animal, it's yeah. an individual, it can have its on days yeah. and its off days and whatever else. And you know, they're yeah. not machines that you switch on when you want them to work. Where people fall down is that they think or they will believe, I'm going for a walk in the park, it's late at night, but I'll be okay, I'll take the dog with me. The yeah. dog will look after me. You know, it's yeah. a bit of a uh, dangerous walk home or whatever. I'm a bit 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 worried about it, but I'll take the dog because the dog will look after me simply by virtue of the fact that it's my dog and they'll protect me because yeah. they love me. And if anything bad were to happen, they'll st stand up for me. Not really the case. Not at all. In Most the of the vast time, majority yeah. of instances, yeah. if anything were to happen, the, the dog's the dog like will either, redirect onto yeah, you when yeah, you drop the lead. Yeah. Gone. Or looking to scoff whatever food happens to be dropped yeah, on the yeah. uh, on the ground by the you yeah. know nighttime and economy well, on the way home. When, or, when we were researching for this episode, me and Danny went down an absolute rabbit hole of watching these videos. Yeah, I, was, I showed you. Uh, yeah. I, it's a service I offer where we'll test your dog for you. Yeah. And, they never pass. Yeah. <laughs> the vast majority of sold dogs for a lot of money won't pass yeah. it. They won't. Well, we were watching these videos, weren't we? Of um, It was like a news piece in the States. And they basically said to all these people, do you think your dog would protect you from an intruder that came into mm. your house? And almost without exception, every yeah. single person went, yeah, yeah, my dog would definitely protect me. And then they set it up. So this guy walked in in the bite suit, in the big yeah. uh, protection suit, uh, and walked in, kind of like went into the house. And the dogs were there, and the dog, and like he'd make a noise and try and freak the dogs out. And without exception, I think there was one Jack Russell. Well, little Jack there, Russell had a little nip at the ankles and, and then left them out. And all didn't the run away, other dogs. Like, nah, yeah, <laughs> all the other dogs went, ooh, turned yeah. tails and ran away. So, Even, so, so. Yeah. One of them, he grabbed a load of ornaments, put a lead on the dog, and walked out the front door. Oh, well, the one that 
picked up the kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Picked up the kid. There's a bit of ours in the bathroom, mate. Yeah, yeah. Just pause here a second down there, second on the left, like that. (laughs) They're not going to wake up. The dogs were so into self preservation that they kind of completely ignored the threat. So there was no protection. There was no. A couple of them barked a little bit, but none of them went in for it. They just kind of turned tails. Let's 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 use that to to debunk the myth around these sorts of dogs. These dogs aren't protecting you because they love you and, you know, I need to protect me mum, me dad. It's not. It's a completely selfish act. They are genetically disposed to feel that extreme joy arousal through the act of chasing and biting. When we train them dogs, we we mold the environment to dictate what the course of behavior is, but it's all selfish. The dog's doing it to bring itself joy in the moment. People don't like to hear People the fact don't that they're dog selfish, that. but the so dog's selfish. Let me yeah. give you yeah. an example. And, you know, there's, everyone who follows my page, this, it's complete transparency. But when I was training Logan, like I said, he's a very assertive dog. My, Logan was all bite and no bark. He didn't want to bark, but it's very important that we get a bark because we want the dog to deter before we have to use yeah, right. the dog in, yeah. in, in, in it um, to, to bite. So he didn't want to bark. So how do we get a dog to bark like that? Well, we withhold and hope that it builds frustration and the decoy stays active and looks and might walk a little bit away. And all we need is one, one bark and we let him go. And he goes, oh, that releases me for a bite that. And when we get more barks out of him, not Logan. Logan waited, just looked at him intently, chattered in his teeth. He gave it about two seconds and realized they wouldn't go and turn around, climb the lead, trying to bite me. And I went through about three three months of that where I'd have to hang him out to stop him, have the decoy come active, and as soon as he looked at the decoy, he went again, and then we had to break it down to the point where, hang on, I'm not getting anywhere from trying to, from trying to bite him. Let me, let me just hold it on him and let, wait for him to let me go, and then we got a noise out of him, we let him go, we built it to a bark. So... The average pet owner just is not going to be equipped for that. It's not, and, and this is my point of, all he wants is that that bite. He didn't care where he got it from. He just wants to bite. And that's a really good example about the difference between having the heart to protect and mm. the skills to protect. And you can see just how much, how much work goes into building that up in a dog that's yeah. trained for protection work, whether that's for sport, whether that's for police work or security work or anything. There's a huge amount of work and training and skills that go into that. Yeah. And but ongoing training as well, yeah. continual it, yeah. Yeah. And it's If it were the case that the dog would naturally protect me simply by virtue of the fact that I'm me and you're you, yeah. you know, then you would have military, you would have law enforcement, you would have security, yeah. etc., who don't need to do the training. Exactly. Because yeah. the dog would protect exactly. you by virtue There's a reason of the, the police have a dog, a dog handling right. course. And we think that they're there because they genuinely care about us in a way where they'll defend us when... The dog's natural instinct will self-preservate. Do you know, I've got so much respect for police dog handlers and, and mm-hmm. canine dog handlers. I mean, the stuff that you used to do, Jay, to be able to take a dog and teach it that and be able to teach that dog then how to generalise that into the wider world to keep those skills, mm-hmm. that's just phenomenal, A lot it? of that depends on the dog. It depends on the dog. Yeah. Like you said, the, 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 you have to have those yeah. qualities within the dog. You know, just I, I've been at football matches where, uh, you know, crowds are coming out. And so you've got this, what ought to be a perceived threat yeah. of chanting fans coming forward, challenging police officers, and you have a line of police dogs there. Now, you'll see this in a lot of footage. If you look, I remember seeing it in Belgium, mm. um, following a terror attack in Belgium where a couple of the dogs there. You cannot guarantee what the dog will do. And I've been there alongside guys where somebody's dog is there going like that, yeah. doing exactly what, and you think, thank goodness I've got you at the end yeah. of the lead here, and it's yeah, a real deterrent. Yeah. And you've got the other one where someone's having to go, watch him, yeah, watch, yeah, yeah, watch yeah. him, the dog's sort of like looking round and yeah. this, giving calm and signals yeah, about this life. Yeah. Off. And, and that's a liability, yeah. you know, that, because you've got... It's got to get an officer killed. Yeah. Right, and not just the officer, but the members of the public, the officer's there to protect. But I think the key point here is that despite how much you love your dog and how much your dog loves you, yeah. it's never going to be under that obligation yeah. to protect you, so don't assume it will. No. Some really great great points here. We'll be right back after the break with some practical tips and some great listener questions. Welcome back. We've got some great practical tips for this week's episode. Guys. The first practical tip is if you're really, really serious about wanting a dog like this, it can't just be, I need this dog to protect me. It can't be. You have to be I want to be involved. I want to train this dog full time. Hopefully compete with this dog in such and such. That's going to be the safest attitude to have to guarantee that you're going to dedicate the time that's necessary to a dog like this. Also, do not just jump in and buy this sort of dog. 
find reputable clubs, visit them for long periods of time, ask if there's dogs that you can handle, ask if you can, you know, be in the in in the bite suit and see what, what it's about. See if you ask questions to people around, how what's it like living with this dog? What bloodline is this dog? And see if there's any traits that you you like in that dog in compared to this dog. Because some so of them do your research. Do your research, yes. Some of the lines, some of the lines from these dogs, the, the bits of kit. You've got to be, you've got to be on it. You know what I mean? I can read about quantum physics right now. Could, could can I apply it in any way, shape, or form, or yeah, deliver a, a lecture point. on it? I can read about building an engine. I couldn't build an engine. You but can, can read... you do an impression of Scooby Doo? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> you can. No, I, I, evidently not. <laughs> yeah, you can. Um, you can. You can research Temptation about any br any breed, a Malinois, a Dutch Airedale, all you want. No one will come at it from a logical perspective. You had a, ha a home invasion. Your kids have been kidnapped. You've been robbed, and the dog just got shun off and you'll be left 65 grand down, your house robbed and your family in danger. We're sat here saying that dogs won't protect us. I've seen videos of dogs jumping into a canal where there's a cat and they've picked up that cat yeah. and they've swum to the side and protected that cat and got it oh, out and they've saved yeah. it. It's that's like, how you perceive it. Yeah, that's seen, what you perceive. I've seen dogs. My dogs, as far as I love my dogs, I've, for what they are, value them for what they are. I love them as well. Do you know what I mean? I'm a bit of a softy with it. And you we, are we, soft. We, we can, we, we've had the debate. We can so have sweet. the debate as much as we like about love and stuff like that. But I know that if I were at the side of a busy road and I were to put a pile of food down for one of my dogs who loves me and my very, very hungry dogs. And I decided I'm gonna go and stand in the center of that busy road with oncoming traffic. My dog is not gonna think, I'll eat later, I've got a job to do. Yeah. Do, do, do. Come with me, yeah. I'll die. I'm capable of dragging you to the curb, my friend. Because much as I might like to think that they possess that, and, and, yeah. and you know, and and, and there's nothing wrong with most, thinking no, that. It's most normal. of the time it's normal. harmless and it's yeah, fun. It's yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. But the reality of it is, nobody would really stand and say yes. Yeah. That is what a most dog would do. most dogs soil yourselves, and all I'd say is, don't let your ego ruin your carpet. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Not a not a bad saying. Yeah, yeah. The the majority of people that are saying my dog will protect me, they haven't even got an appropriate breed that's been selectively bred for this job. They've you know they've got chihuahuas and. Staffordshire Bull Terriers and things it like that. It can be nasty, you, yeah. aren't you? Those you're in a house. Hours. You're in a house with young children. You're in a house with young children. Someone comes bulldozing through that door, and your kids in the way. Chances are your kids going to get bitten while that dog tries to make it for the for, yeah. the, for the door. All kinds of service dogs do an incredible job, but none of them are necessarily going to do that innately. So you take the search and rescue dogs. Um, that we have, none of them are going to kind of naturally go in and search and rescue people. They've got to be trained for that. Well, it's no like a big game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No lassie they dog get a sort reward of. at the end of doing yeah. the thing that they've been trained to do. There was edits there. There was edits there. The reality of it is, Lassie didn't go to the you know the the, the, the vicar down the road to get help. Lassie pissed Billy off out after the a squirrel. Well. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's exactly what Lassie did. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's lovely to think, and it makes great great cinema, but. Do you, you know, there's, a, like there's a cartoon, there's a cartoon, um, I won't say the name of the cartoon because I don't want to advertise it, but <laughs> yeah. my, my, my kids are, uh, and I, you know, as an adult, like, laugh at it because it's got a bit of sort of like, adult humour in this cartoon thing. But there was a clip in it where this, this lad had a dog, you know, found this dog and decided it was the best dog in the world ever. And uh, he got stuck down this well along with his friends. <laughs> and they said, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? He said, don't, don't, don't worry. You remember, we got the dog. We got the dog outside. So he calls out to the dog and says, send help like this. And, and he's looking out to see what the dog is doing and he says oh he's running for help and there's all, all this majestic music as this dog's Aww. running off and then he goes oh he's got an itch oh he's chewing a stick oh he's tired <laughs> he's lying down and i just thought that's brilliant because it that is, is, brilliant. It, it, it is, it is so brilliant. reflective of reality it, it is brilliant but i mean that's the million dollar question isn't it mm. if there was a, a symbol a single simple test that you could run to decide whether that puppy is going to be a really good working dog, well, that would make life so easy, wouldn't it? Yeah, but unfortunately, there's the just program. not genetics working no. a weird. Is that baby going to be a physicist? I've had, I've yeah. had, yeah. Exactly. I've right. had so yeah. many strong, strong puppies, and as they've matured, I just see weakness in them, and they're not suitable. And I've had dogs who I think mm, a bit low in drive. They, Logan was a bit of a puddle when he was a puppy. I was like, mm, I'm not sure. It's got, and all of a sudden, at maturity, I was like, oh bloody hell! Be careful yeah. what you wish for. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, genetics work in a weird and wonderful way, and we can we can always have like a, a roundabout understanding of what we're going to get but we're never going to conquer it are we yeah. it's just so complex it is, well, even when the dogs end up on on police dog handling courses like you were saying jay there's a good there's a good lot of them that don't the graduate. failure rate's don't incredible the there. failure rate's it incredible really is, yeah. either pre yeah. either pre you know initial yeah. course during initial course or post it less so the further on the further on the dog goes then less so the yeah. failure rate but certainly the 
having the acquired attributes or required attributes to be able to complete that course and to be able to protect, you know, and Prison and dogs do, are even harder jobs. to get yeah. through. Prison dogs, they fail that landing test all the time. You might have a brilliant dog, really bold, holds its ground, gives a good bark, will will engage. You put it on the landing and it's, it's nervous, I've you can't it. do it. I've yeah. had it. I've I, had I, loads I, of them yeah. since. Yeah. I had an operational dog that I actually worked and I worked him through it. I had to, had to work yeah, him yeah. through it because there was nothing else available at the time, you know? Slippy but fours catch them out as well. Exactly that. Slippy exactly fours catch them out. Yeah. And you'd come across yeah. and it's like, yeah, boulders, but screech, tippy tippy tippy, clitty clatty clitty clatty. Oh, you know, Sounds like me in a pair of shoes. Yeah. Because, <laughs> because, because the surface. That dog is there to save an officer's life. That dog is there so that police man or police woman goes home to their children. And if needs be, that dog has to give its life to make sure that a human life is saved. And we're seeing a lot of videos hitting YouTube where police dogs fail to engage. And it's it's not acceptable. It's where it's where society is influencing in the, in the wrong areas. We're putting we're putting officers' lives at risk. And and I, I would say you know from being outside of that now, yeah. you know um, that that the impact that social. Uh, belief if you like that the dog shouldn't be put in harm's way you know that, that, yeah. that we shouldn't be um using animals in that way you know for, for human gains i mean come on yeah. you know we're talking about protecting people we're talking about protecting animals we're talking yeah. about protecting or maintaining order all sorts yeah, of things yeah. these dogs live and i will say this to uh, anybody who's watching and for anybody who's listening these dogs live phenomenal oh, lives yeah. phenomenal lives it'd be like having your private health care it'd be like having your absolute you know yeah. your own um chauffeur it's like having your own uh, exercise guru. Yeah, it's like having yeah. your own chef who ensures that yeah. you get the best food at all times. Yeah. Somebody's meeting your absolute Personal needs training, exercise all the time. Plan, yeah, 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 yeah. And I am a hundred and ten percent welfare focused in yeah. in everything I do, in everything that I support, in everything I represent. And I would not be representing and supporting dogs in those situations mm -hmm. if I could not say from experience. Yeah from direct experience, you know, not from what I think, that they have a phenomenal life. Let's go to the questions. I, th I hear we've got okay, some really good questions. Okay, let me see what we've got. Whenever we go on a long car journey to visit our relatives, our dog stands up when we're a few roads away. How does she know when we are near? Is that because someone goes, nearly there. Yeah. Yeah. Are we there yet? Yeah. Yeah. Here we are. <laughs> Nanny's house is just a few more down yeah. the road. Oh, is it? <laughs> uh, I think, I think we, we need a bit more context to that. You, you, you don't know what's going on. You know, you, that might just be what you're perceiving, but the dog might have done that 15 times along the journey. You know, we, 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 don't, we don't really know what we're And if it's a dog that has been, you, you, you could also say that if it's a dog that's done the journey several times over yeah, yeah, it's and, it, and it, le it learns the actual turns that start yeah. to lead to, yeah, yeah. Why, well, why not? It could even be something as simple. Is there's a hump in the road or a pothole? Yeah, there, right, something it? specific. Like, yeah. oh, or they oh, hit a 20 mile an hour zone before they get there. There could be a, there could yeah, be a load of reasons. Yeah, we need yeah. a little bit more. Specifics I suppose to... the question is, you could you could do quite a nifty experiment with this because you could do several journeys to several different locations and see if the dog repeatedly does it. And if it's standing up consistently, yeah. then you can assume, I think, quite safely that the dog is standing up because it knows it's nearing its destination. Whereas if it's only in some on, on some routes, then it might be something specific about or the route. Or on repeated so, journeys. So if you if you developed a, a, a history of going from A to B. We'd be grateful if you'd try that and give us an email and see how you're getting on. Question two. Yeah. How much of my dog's personality is training? And how much of it is just that dog? Oh. I have a little, um, there's no science or anything that I'm aware of that backs it up, but I have a little theory, especially when I'm working with protection dogs that I work on. Um, 30, 70, 30% 30 solid genetics and 70% effects of training. I think effects of training accounts for a lot, but having the right genetics does matter. Do you know whether or not there'd be anything in a neuroscience sense that... But we'll get back to that. that it's a that? good question. I think that's one that we can look at in the literature for sure. But certainly what we've seen with this study is that personality definitely does matter but not half as much as training. Yeah. But if you haven't got the personality in the first place, you're not going to be able to train that. Yeah, so they yeah. are mutually... Yeah. And then again, there's certain traits that are going to be really prevalent. If you've got a young puppy that is absolutely petrified, chances are that's genetic nerve and it's, it, that puppy's never going to be bold and confident in different environments. You're going to struggle to generalise behaviour, especially environmental, environmental effects. I'd want to know how you see the difference between just that dog yeah. and personality. 
Yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? So if you yeah. take training out, yeah, well, what is If you're leaving your dog to just run around the garden every day and there's a load of balls there and it's high drive, then you're going to create a personality that's not favourable in a household. I don't think you can train yeah. a temperament. I don't yeah. think you can train an individuality, no. an individual nature. I think you can harness it. I think yeah. you can sort yeah. of like manage it, control it. Yeah. Yeah. Nurge it, yeah. nurture it. Because it's never just ways. one or the other. It's always how genetics are inter interacting with the environment, how the environment yeah. is then in interacting with the genetics. There's so much interconnection between the two that it's really difficult to say. Yeah. You know, whether it is the dog or whether it's, you know, the, the, the training that it's had. Is it nature or is it nurture? Mm. It's always the interaction between the two. Yeah. Well, but what studies like this help us to do is really draw out the relevant bits yeah. Yeah, of the 100%. dog's uh, nature. And then we can look at how we can nurture that to get mm. the outcome that we're looking for. If, you, if, you, if we're going specifically on the topic we're talking about now, will me dog protect me? Um, selection of bloodline, breeding yeah. um, is going to matter. And if you've got a puppy that you're not really having to you know, persuade to do things and he's just happy to go out. You don't need to put him in high levels of drive, you know, get him aroused and excited to get him to walk up steps or do things. Then that's a good sign that the dog's yeah. happy to explore its, its environment. There are indicators, aren't there? Mm, absolutely. Oh, I love these questions and we love to have them coming in. So if you have a question, then please do send it on. And Jamie, how can they do that? At Dog Scholar Podcast is how you can find us on our social media or alternatively, you can email us podcast at the dog scholar.com talking of things we love hearing i love hearing dog icks mm, what are oh, our yeah, dog icks, so i forgot about them yeah. <laughs> don't forget about the icks yeah they were your idea um yeah these were in um, <laughs> these the, the we've kind of covered these but i, I selected them because it, it was relevant to the yeah. podcast but we've got kenny from bradford that says my dog will protect me that's his dog ick like, and, and, I, and I share that ick with you. Oh, right, so yeah. he's just basically our podcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, no, he's, he's, podcast. he's saying it's an ick that he yeah, sees yeah, yeah, people yeah, say yeah. that, yeah. Oh, so that we've we've covered that, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's really frustrating, um, not just because it's from a place of, like, like, naivety, but it could really land someone at risk if you yeah. really genuinely believe that and you think you're going into a situation where you're safe and secure, yeah. i.e., you know, if you live in a bit of a rough area and, you know, you're on your own vulnerable walking through a dark... Um, um, park or something like that. Yeah. You know, you can put yourself at risk by yeah. believing these yeah, these yeah. myths, or end up getting into trouble if your dog actually does do the thing that you're expecting. It to yeah, do. and you and you're not educated in what are the limits, what are the yeah. what are the legal boundaries Absolutely. that I'm allowed to cross. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And then we have Mally from Nottingham. His dog ick is my dog's here to protect my children. Oh, yeah. similar sort of thing. Yeah, similar yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. If you're leaving your dog loose around your children under the grounds that you think it's going to protect them, you you really are putting your children at risk. Uh, yeah, if you, you think really your are... dog has got the required yeah. attributes to no. protect it against yeah. anything and you're leaving them with the kids, then yeah. you are, that yeah. is... It's not something you want to be doing. No, not to be recommended. Yeah. But again, one of the common features that I see with all of the studies and the practical applications are how easily we transpose our own feelings and desires onto our dogs. But it just puts a lot of pressure on the dog in the relationship. And it's not fair. No, it's absolutely. not fair. That's all we've got time for this week, I'm afraid. But if you did enjoy it, then please share it with a friend. Because if they don't enjoy it, maybe their dog's will. And finally, over to Danny for his final thoughts. We're going to have a bit more of a sensible final thought Go on, today. Danny. Are we? So, Go on. Are just, we? Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> please bear in mind, I'm going to repeat some things that we've already mentioned, but please bear in mind that people who have these really impressive dogs that you're seeing on social media, they dedicate their lives to them. They've put years and countless hours into them. You're not going to go out and get that dog like this, uh, uh, clicking your fingers. <laughs> yeah, just for, the, for the audio listeners, yeah, you're not just going to get out and, and, and have that dog for life without having to put some serious work into it. And chances are, you're not really equipped to own such a dog. Please understand that your dog it doesn't have any sort of moral compass and is not duty bound to protect you or your family. If your dog's not trained to do so, it will likely self-preservate, bite you and flee the scene. And I'm going to finish on the quote that I said before. Please do not let your ego ruin your carpet. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic final thought, mate. See you next week.